Hello! In this video tutorial I will show you how to convert multiple embroidery files automatically into another file format while keeping the thread colors consistent. For this I will use Automate Directions, which are introduced with StitchBuddy version 2.14 in December 2017. I'm Matthias, I'm the developer of StitchBuddy and StitchBuddy is an application for editing machine embroidery files and it comes for with versions for iOS and macOS and the automate directions I'm talking about today are part of StitchBuddy for macOS. Automator is a powerful utility from Apple. It's a part of your applications folder and for the convenience I have already put Automator into the dock of my computer. So this little robot here is Automator. And Automator is a, um, a tool which allows you to define workflows of different steps which are performed automatically. Um, I already covered this in the previous video tutorial a little bit where we created a workflow which uh, created a PDF catalog of embroidery files. Um, there are other options, uh, not only workflows but um, other options you can use to integrate um, tasks from Automator with your macOS. For example, you can define full directions which are automatically triggered if files are copied or moved into a specific folder. Or another possibility are services. Services are kind of context menu, context item you have, uh, for example, in the finder when you're selecting a file, right-clicking on a file, you can see services which are performed on these items. But today we will focus on a standalone application. So basically we will create a program itself which accepts files you drop on this program and automatically these files will be converted into a different embroidery file format and um, you will be presented with these results automatically. So I'm starting with choosing the application and the remark at the top of the screen already reflected that I don't need to care about the files which are passed to my workflow. They are provided automatically if I'm dropping um, items on, on the icon of this application later on. You will see it when we, when we test our workflow. So um, let's assume I have a couple of brother embroidery files, file format is PASS, and my machine, my embroidery machine accepts only, for example, Tachima DST files. Um, so I would like to convert files automatically without opening StitchBody and use the save as option for each file individually. Um, another thing is, uh, as you might know, DST files don't come with colors. They have information which, uh, order, which indicates that a new thread should be used, but they don't give you the information what color this new thread should have. Um, it's a professional embroidery format and it's quite usual that these formats don't come with color information. So what I would like to do is I would like to keep the, the original color information of my PASS file so at least at, at, at my Mac, I can still see the, the design as it, as it is with its red colors. The DST file itself on my machine won't have this information, but at least on my Mac, I would like to keep it. So what I would like first to do with um, pass files passed into my, my little um, automator workflow here is I would like to add thread color information to them. Uh, you might know this from Stitch Buddy, from the Stitch Buddy application, where you can choose the, the color, um, the thread palette you, you use, the color card. So there's, there's an action for that. It comes with the documents or folder here, category. So first I will um, change the thread palette of embroidery designs and here on the on the lower side of the screen you can see some information about this action. Um, there's also a warning, I will cover that in a minute. Um, so I will just drag and drop this action into my workflow 
And here comes the warning. Um, when Stitch Buddy and Stitch Buddy is working in the background of this action, changes this red palette of our design, it will create an additional file. It will not touch the design itself, but it will only create this additional file. But if I have this design in different file types, for example, a pass file for browser and a Jeff file for Genemy and, and so on, this threads file will be used for each of them. So it's, it's not a critical step, but at least it's something you should be aware of. So that's what the warning here is for. Or just confirm it. So I mentioned I will pass browser files into the workflow. So I would like to keep them their browser um, colors. So I'm checking the browser colors here. That's all to do in this step. After this step, each design will have an additional file dot threads, which will keep the color information. After that, I want to convert actually the files. And well, it could be saved in desktop, but um, I would like to give the user of, or myself later when I'm performing this workshop, the uh, workflow, the opportunity to select a different destination. So if I use this step as it is, it would be always saved files on my desktop. I would like to have this action to ask me when it runs where the files should be saved. And as you just saw, there is an option. It's part of most of the actions you have and there you can select if when running a workflow uh, some information should be able to be changed. Um, might become a little bit more clear when we're running the workshop la uh, workflow later on. So after that my embroidery files have the threads files they are converted to um, no not genomy but I would like to have them converted to DST. And as a last step, I would like the uh, macOS finder presenting me this new designs. So um, it's an action in files and folders. It's called reveal finder items. I just drag and drop it after the last step. So I think that should work. Just check again that I'm, I marked the destination to be shown when the workflow runs. Yes, that looks good. So now I will just save the workflow. And I'll save it to my desktop and call it maybe or con convert to DST. So. And then I will now close the automator. And that's, that's the difference between a standalone application and an automated workflow. In my last video tutorial, I showed you a workflow. And each time you use this workflow, you will open Automator and run it. With this um, um, task I have created today, I will not use directly the Automator. But now I have this small icon on my desktop with this robot. It's my workflow. And if I'm using some embroidery files. For example, let's take these. I will just drag and drop them onto the icon. The workflow starts automatically again without launching Automator. It's just a it's standalone application. It asks me for the information I just checked. So that's the reason why I put this check mark on the destination folder. So it's not automatically storing the result files every time it runs into my desktop, but it asks me. And I can choose a different folder. Um, for example, this one. And check replace existing files. Also, this folder is empty at the moment. And now I'm running this workflow. And here it is. That's the output of my workflow. The output folder on my desktop. It has created DST files for each of these five embroidery designs I selected. And as you can see, there are additional thread 
threads files, which represent the color information. And if I now hit the space bar to quick look these four designs, you will see that they will reflect thread colors. Also, that's not part of the DSTD file. So, here in the upper right corner, you can see it has brother threads, information which is took from the thread file. Uh, it's a DST, but it has colors. And that's the same for all of these designs. Oh, not five, it was seven, sorry. Um, so, what we did now, we have created a workflow as a standalone application. Um, the workflow accepts files which are dropped on it. It will preserve color information, convert the file into DSTs, ask me for the destination folder, and runs completely automatically just by dropping some files on, on the workflow icon. Um, I think that's a second example how to use automator actions to make your life more easily. And it's, as I mentioned, really a powerful tool. You can do a lot with this workflow. So just I really like to encourage you to, to look into the actions, combine them. You can really test and try a lot of things. Uh, I found it very, um, very useful if I'm dealing with multiple designs, multiple files. Uh, more often than only once, and repetitive tasks. That's exactly what the automator is for. So that's it for today. Um, I would encourage you to ask questions if you have. Use the YouTube channel or use um, my Facebook page or send me a mail. Um, please share your opinion about Stitch Buddy and your experiences with others and uh, have a great time. Thanks.